Hello, welcome to my channel. If you've ever used Reticulum Mesh Chat, then you might have used it to talk to your own devices and maybe you don't have anybody nearby to talk to and if you're using um, a Reticulum node, <coughs> an R node, then there's nobody in LoRa range, there's no one to talk to. And so you've probably discovered if you look at interfaces and then add an interface, there are these two community interfaces, public testnet interfaces. And I thought, well, I'd like to run one of these too, so I can invite my friends to join it and my other machines. So we can all talk together privately, and it won't be publicly available like this. This is baked into the um, the actual uh, mesh chat software, of course. And I want to make ones that are not baked in, that are uh, only available to people I tell about them. And so just looking at how, for example, Amsterdam has been done, <clears throat> it's been just given a name, so you can give your own bootstrap node, which is what this is, a random name. And you have to say it's a TCP client interface in this drop down menu. And then um, it needs to have its own URL. In fact, it's a fully qualified domain name, which uh, you can set up um, if you're using a home connection and you have a, a router, of course, from your internet service provider, then you can hopefully get that to run the DDNS service so that it advertises its public IP address linked to a domain name, something like this, which you can make up and you can host that somewhere, um, the link using ddns.org or maybe uh, noip.com. There are quite a few of these free um, redirection services. So you have to know how to set that up. <clears throat> and then on the node, you choose a port, and this can be a random number you choose. But what you have to do on your internet connection router is to open this port and direct traffic to the IP address of your machine, which you need to know, uh, the, the local LAN IP address of your machine, so that incoming connections to your public IP, <clears throat> to your router, that come in on this port number are routed to the internal machine, which is serving up this uh, little node. Um, what I do is I tend to use virtual machines so that you can spin one up, try it, if it doesn't work, delete it, or refresh it, try again using Proxmox, but uh, you don't have to. It's easier than uh, using bare metal machines every time. This is Ubuntu, by the way, Ubuntu 22. So um, what you need to do is just to set up an interface which you can connect to using um, <coughs> Mesh Chat in its uh, interfaces section like this. And you see it's a very simple setup. So how do we configure that? So then we, on a, a different machine, doesn't need to be on the, shouldn't really be on the same one as the, the this client. Um, so on a different machine, what you need to do is you can use the mesh chat program if you want, so you can see what's going on like that. I tend to just edit the uh, config file directly, which is located here in home slash dot reticulum. This is a hidden directory, so you have to uh, enable here, show hidden files. You have to turn that on, otherwise you'll never find this dot reticulum. So you look in here, and this is the config file, which you can just double click on to uh, open up. By default, it would open a text editor, which is here. And um, you just need to modify this. And you see that this uh, mesh chat program, when it first ran, set up this um, default config file. And it sets up a thing called default interfaces, which is what you normally use. And that's the uh, the entry for this uh, default interface, which is called this is type auto interface enabled equals true, and that's the name of it default interface, which, which appears in the program here. You find that when you change make changes in these settings for interfaces in Mesh Chat, you have to remember to restart it after you've done that. But then it actually changes what's in this file here, and sometimes it messes things up for me. So I tend not to do that. I want to paste in here exactly what I know works. In fact, you don't need this default interface if you're going to set up a bootstrap node, which could be running on a Raspberry Pi or on a Linux container, an LXC on Proxmox, or a tiny, tiny little computer is all you need. But I'm going to set this to false or no. Let's put false because it said true before. You can either use true and false or yes and no. Maybe there are capital letters at the beginning, maybe not. I'm never quite sure about the syntax. Sometimes you have to experiment with these things. So I've um, turned off the default interface in this interfaces section. And what you have to do is just put in this, which is the definition of the TCP server. Now this is running, as I said, on a, a small machine that doesn't even need a desktop uh, user interface. You could just uh, run this on a command line um, basis, um, headless if you wanted. 
it's of course easier to run it on a full uh, desktop machine because then you can see uh, a bit better what's going on and debug it but um, this works so you you define a you declare a tcp server interface the type is tcp server interface believe it or not and um, <clears throat> then you have to enable it so it's yes and you tell it to listen on an IP address of 0, .0, 0.0.0.0. What that means is it's listening to all IP addresses in your LAN. <clears throat> Anything that comes in on this port number, it will receive. So you have to choose this port. This is a, one of the standard ones for a bootstrap node in reticulum 4242. There's another one I can't remember. If you look at the public ones or the ones that you can you can find, you'll find that they often use one of these or a different one. Maybe for security reasons, it's better to use a, a different number for port number and just remember to set it in your router port forwarding so that um, public IP address is forwarded <coughs> on to this port number. So this little server, um, when it hears any traffic directed to that port number on from going to any IP address, it will receive it and it will um, forward it because forward is set to yes. And so what it does is it makes a like a focal point for um, mesh chat clients to connect to, just like the um, the uh, public interface over here I showed you between the borders or Amsterdam, it makes one of those. One thing you do need to remember to do, and if you don't, it doesn't work, is you have to go up here and you have to change enable transport because it's going to have to transport from one network to another. So that's currently false. You have to, whoops, you have to set that <coughs> to true so that uh, and save this control s or press save so the file is now saved on the little server and it's working as a transport node and it's listening on that port number <coughs> which has been forwarded from the public internet through your router so it means that when somebody puts in the url that you've chosen to use for it and the port number then they can connect to it using a mesh chat client like this one <coughs> so you remember when you looked at these things let's look at the other one between the borders so they would have to put in your um, URL or the name the domain name that uh, you've been told you would put that in there <clears throat> and the port number see this one is using 4242 that's all you need in the client so this is the client which is connecting to this server which is here and <clears throat> when you have multiple clients connected to one server you'll see them actually in the um, what's it called this uh, network visualizer if you click on that it'll show you the various nodes hanging off your little server here it takes some seconds or minutes depending on the number of hops to um, for these to show up and for the connections to be established for the mesh to learn what's going on but uh, quite quickly you find it works and then you can relay messages from one mesh to another which i'm doing between different uh, cities and different countries um, where i have nodes running and you can then link them all up so they all appear to be one mesh with a bit of uh, internet connectivity in between via this little server. Anyway, it's sort of a bit complicated, but as you can see, it, it's really simple, but it's perhaps complicated to understand what's going on. So uh, I look forward to reading your questions and comments. Please remember to like and subscribe. And now I just have to find the OBS to stop it. Goodbye.